April is here, a couple of weeks into spring, at least by the calendar. In the Northeast, though, warm days are still rare, so when one pops up and there's a convertible available, it's time for a drive. One cannot live by motorcycles alone, as it turns out, at least I can't. Almost, but not quite. I'm interested in pretty much all forms of personal transport, and that certainly includes cars. You know, interesting ones. One thing I enjoy is trying to size up the relationships people have with their cars. In particular, I love to spot silver-haired drivers in anything from 65 Ford Mustang convertibles to 30-year-old Saab 900 turbos. Sometimes it's pretty clear that these folks are the car's original owners, that the drivers and their machines are going through life stages together. They just have that look like longtime partners. Lately, I feel like I'm becoming one of those people. My 95 Mazda Miata isn't quite as old as those examples, but last year it officially became an antique. The DMV even sent a letter saying that it's so old that I no longer need to have it inspected. Wow. Also, people remind me all the time. They say, nice old car, and they ask, uh, what year is that? As if the year is stuck so far back in time that it might take uh, hard work to pry it out. My car, I call it Baby Bug, looks just like the first Miatas that hit showrooms in 1989, so a casual onlooker might think this one is in its early 30s. It definitely is of another time. Cassette tape player, hand crank windows, 14-inch wheels, pop-up headlights, and just two airbags. Cars have come a long way. I hope to start making more personal history with the Miata now that our sons are nearing college age and my wife and I could be empty nesters soon. Suddenly a two-seater might make sense again, like it did when we were dating. But beyond practical considerations, the Miata is just ridiculously fun. The experience of driving it has yet to get old. I feel the same tingles today that I felt bringing it home from the dealership in 1995. Its 128 horsepower engine has more than enough muscle to move it with verve. It doesn't break any speed records, but it feels fast, way faster than it is. And that's ideal for real-world driving, where speed limits and traffic congestion reduce the idea of the wide open road to mere fantasy. When I look at sports cars for sale, ready to fulfill the midlife crisis needs of drivers of a certain age, my age, I realize that I have that car already. It's like I started a midlife crisis at 28. Still monogamous, though, I haven't found a car for which I'd trade the Miata. MGs, Triumphs, and other old English iron? Forget it. Unlike those cars, the Miata actually runs well and reliably. Even exotics like old Ferraris or new Porsches, if they were within my budget, wouldn't tempt me because they're fussy and couldn't possibly be more fun than the Mazda, in part because you just can't let yourself go in them. Many Miata imitators have come and gone. About 20 years ago, the Honda S2000 came kind of close with wonderful driving dynamics and the only shift linkage that I think matches the Mazda's perfection. But it cost more and wasn't as user-friendly or as stylish. Around the same time, Toyota's MR2 Spider missed the mark. A few years later, the Pontiac Solstice and Saturn Sky from General Motors, more like kit cars masquerading as production models, failed completely. Porsche's Boxster is still around and a joy to drive, but overpriced and overly complicated. BMW's Z Series has also been on the market since the 90s, but I don't think anyone actually buys them anymore. If you want a two-seat Roadster you can really use, with a decent trunk that doesn't cost too much, or have design flaws that will drive you mad, I think you should just go for the Miata and skip the rest. The new model, the fourth generation, maintains the spirit of the original, but so do the second and third gen versions. By the way, I don't work for Mazda in any capacity, just happen to own one of their cars. And of course, I like my first gen model the best. It's because of the lights. Pop-ups were synonymous with super sports cars when I was coming of age, and 
Here's the bonus. You can raise the Miata's lights without turning them on. Mazda says this is so you can clean the lenses, but everyone knows it's so you can signal other Miata drivers. We call it winking, something I never see a Ferrari do. Thanks for watching.